Hello everyone, I finally have, I think I have stereo working and I have uh, my microphone working. So I'm going to try to record um, a little bit here and also uh, talk about multi-track recording and how I have FL Studio set up. Um, if you can see my screen, I'm going to try it with this layout so you can kind of see everything. Digitac, myself, all that. Um, I may have to reshoot this if you can't see it well enough, but let's just start going through it. So the first thing is when you're multi-track recording um, in FL Studio specifically, uh, one thing that I learned early on is that I do not use the uh, processing inputs here. Uh, even though this would be like the ideal way to bring it in, the problems I've had with this is that it drops out after two or three minutes. Um, you know, I've tried every setting and buffers and everything. Um, it just stops working for like about like half a second or so. But for performance, you know, you can't have it drop out at all. So so I had to uh, take these out. So that's one of the first things that I did um, or first things that I learned. Um, so let me go back uh, to here and show you that um, what I have, if you're not familiar with FL Studio, I don't know if it's really critical to go through this, but uh, the first thing I have here is a uh, submix for all of the uh, Digitac uh, tracks. And it's called Drums, and it's blue, and you'll see this is all blue. And this is a submix for all of my Omnisphere parts. So there's eight different parts. You can think of that as eight like VSTs, even though it only, only looks like one, but there's actually eight of them there. And they route through these channels, and then the submix goes here. And you can see that when you highlight these, and if I just scroll through a few of these, you'll see that little green line at the bottom that's just showing that it's outputting to this submix. So I can set all these, and then I can also have an overall uh, volume level. In fact, for this video, I found that the, the keys was a little bit low, so I, I moved that up. That's why that one's higher right now. And you'll see these, all of those are routing to the, uh, the red submix. Um, but for multi-track, so if I click on this first track, you'll see here uh, that I have main, left, and right input. Um, so I have my Digitac set into overbridge mode, and it's plugged in through USB, and it's also my sound card. So I use the Digitac almost for all of my audio in this case. Uh, if I'm recording vocals, I run it through the Digitac. Um, one thing that I do a lot of with, um, I don't do like full-blown multi-track recording, but I can demonstrate it. Um, but a lot of times I take the main left and main right into here. And then you'll see here, this one's also, this track is enabled, uh, or this channel, uh, because I take the Digitac in. And when you run it through Overbridge, you get true left and right, you get two channels uh, through your Digitac in. Um, and that's one of the main reasons I use Overbridge is so I get this extra stereo because uh, that lets us run two mono instruments, um, like maybe a modular and vocals, uh, but you can bring that together, which is nice. So, but that's just, I'm just showing you this first one. You can see the other uh, stereo tracks that are coming in from the Digitac. And then down here, you can choose individual monos, which is really nice. So. Let me go through these. So if you look right here, as I as I hit the arrow keys, uh, you'll see, uh, ignore that one, but this is kick one, you know, snare, tom, clap, cowbell, gotta have cowbell, um, and each one of those. And then when I get to the ends, you'll see this is input left and right. So what I'm gonna do just for, uh, to show you multi-track is I'm just going to record uh, four tracks. Yeah, so this is, basically track one through four on the Digitac, and I'm gonna record the mains as well. And I'll talk to you a bit about mono versus stereo and why I actually don't record these as often as I thought I would. But I set up some room here, um, quick little FL Studio tip. Uh, if you're ever wondering a couple things, uh, how to group, uh, if you hold here and pull it up against the next one, you'll see it grouped together. Uh, so I could do that for these. Um, and you might be wondering, why is that cool? Well, I'll show you, whoops, I think I missed that one. Uh, one more. All right, so if you do that, you do that so you can do this. So I have an instrument track uh, here with a Digitac. Um, and if I double click on that, I like it because it can pop up the instrument. 
but I'm get, just going to expand this so I have these all these uh, tracks ready for me to mix and pull stuff in. Um, in this demo, I'm not going to do audio tracks and explain the difference all that. I'm just going to go in and show you clips. Um, so have all these set up as ends. Uh, I'm going to, um, well, I got to put something on them. Right now it's blank. So let me put, uh, I'm, I'm just going to do the, the, the super basic, you know, you're going to recognize, <laughs> recognize this beat, you know, just really, really basic. But that populated all these tracks here. Okay, so let me stop that. Um, do I want to put more stuff on here? No, I'll just leave it like that. I'll just do drums. So I'm just going to focus on the Digitac. So if I hit play up here, you'll see that the Digitac uh, lights up and starts playing through these. So let me show you wh why that works. That works because of right here. In the VST, there's a sync uh, for clock and transport. If you don't want that to happen, I'm going to set it to no and hit play. And you'll see that FL, excuse me, FL Studio is playing, but it's not, you know, starting Digitac. So this is another thing that's nice about having the VST is this does your synchronization. Um, so let's go ahead and hit record. Uh, I'm going to right click on this and show you that I'm only recording audio in this case. And I am going to um, arm these guys. So in FL Studio, you need to ar arm the tracks that you're going to record. Um, there probably is a shortcut for this, but I'm just gonna click on each one. Okay, so I have five tracks ready, and I'm just gonna hit play, and you're gonna see them uh, pop in here. Uh, I'm gonna put it in song mode first, so that it starts right here. So here we go, and you're gonna see these guys appearing right here. Okay, nice little group, and I hit stop. Now, uh, you can see right here, I didn't quite get exact, and uh, this is another, you know, real, quick tip is that um, a lot of times it's nice to pick the range that you want to record. So I'm going to undo that and just go ahead and hit OK. So right after you record, if you hit Control Z and you do undo, you saw how it can quickly just get rid of those. That's because a lot of times when you record, you just, you know, want to get rid of them. And that's why they have that little shortcut. But one thing that's really good is to go in here and actually highlight exactly what you want to record. So here, if I want to do, you know, these four bars, uh, now when I do this, you know, I'm not going to touch anything. I'm just going to sit here. I'm not going to do anything. And you'll see it automatically stops and gives you those uh, clips. Now, of course, each of these clips is individual. So if I solo one of these, if I do this. Now, quick quiz. Let me turn off record because I don't want that. But what's going to happen when I hit play? You should only hear this one drum, right? If you think that's right, you're wrong. Because what's going to happen when I hit play is the Digitac is going to play. <laughs> so one thing you kind of have to do is when you're working with audio clips is, and I don't know a way of a hotkey or a MIDI controller to, to do this. You just got to open this, to hit it to no sync, and then close it. And then now, now I'm just hearing the DT main there. Um, if I, let me, let me solo a different one, actually. That was kind of confusing. Here we go. So there, you only hear the hi-hat. All right, so here's why, uh, and then I'll, I'll stop here because then I can just answer questions uh, up on the forum and take this in a different direction that anybody wants to talk about. But one thing is, is that um, y if you record into these, these are all mono. So all your panning is in the DAW. So, you know, in FL Studio, you can pan right here and, and, and do all that sort of thing. But one thing I really found was that the Digitac is so good at panning. You know, like let me just put the kick and then just, just cycle this guy over to the left. So you should hear on your left channel, and then I'll put the hat on the right. Now, I really wouldn't do that, but you can see that now I hit play. And I got my kick on my left and my hi hat on the right. And stereo effects, all those sort of things, as that starts, you know, coming together. I just found that I use main so much that I usually just record the drums to main and I just re-record them or do something different if I need to, uh, uh, you know, get around something. So I'm going to stop there because I uh, could obviously talk about a lot of things uh, and so I'm just going to stop. All right. Thank you. Bye.